We'll resume when you're comfortable. Goodbye. Hoi hoi. <laughs> that's only the first time I've had to say that, and it's Tuesday. That's pretty good. Hello. O te nā no tato katoa. I'm going to pick up on my own personal evidence, and I'll try and go through this um, and manage it in a more succinct time frame, um, knowing we're managing time too as well. Um, I've got this presentation now that I'm about to go through uh, to demonstrate what I believe to be uh, quite a huge impact on I'm just on one of our local sites. It's called Ohiti Pa. Um, particularly when the executive summary makes particular, it makes reference to improving water quality quantity uh, to manage our values uh, for the catchment. And if this is an example, I'm just going to go to the next one, um, just to show, and I hope this is going, oh, here okay. um, what, go. What this slide is um, attempting to demonstrate, if you've got that in front of you, I just, the bottom um, front end of the par site, um, and then you can just see the shingle boom just in front, and it just shows that kind of setback of what there was back at the time in the early 60s. And so um, I'm just taking it up to just show you, in particular, if you just look at that site in the main stem, um, oh, where am I? The three dots, of course, are the registered sites. The one that you put in your mind's eye is the one that is the Ohiti Pa site. And I want you just to look at in detail this particular map reference where it shows the main stem, which is quite distinctively on the opposite side of Ohiti Pa. Okay? And then when I go back to um, this particular, where have I got the right slide on here? Just give me a moment. Um, what's occurred here, of course, managing our values, has been this operation that's been taking um, gravel uh, through its extra gravel extraction program. Now, this particular area is just right over opposite Roy's Hill here, Te Pōpōro, uh, Te, Pōpō, Te Pōpō, and that um, you don't get to see these sites. The normal people, public, do not see it by dint that these things are not really shown as you start to go past. But the full extent of that gravel extraction, which is now starting to make its way through the main, toward the main stem, I just draw to your attention the depth of extraction in comparison in, in, in lieu of the main stem. And also, if I can just say that through, if this is best practice, uh, it just boggles me as to how um, under the guise of operations and management that this is anywhere near a best, best practice management. Um, it shows the sandstone, the clay clumps, exposes this directly opposite Ohiti Pa. Um, and the silt and sediment, of course, where there are um, those um, sediment traps or, or buffers in the river, but very, very close um, to, to the, um, the past site. I did have a, this was taken two weeks after, and if I can just show you that the extent of where the main stem is aiming itself towards the pa, now you will see that there's no willow trees in front here, so there's been an obvious, there's been an obvious impact and effect because the willows are on either side of the past site, and I'm sure that in the event of a flood site that's been able to scour away um, in the front of our in the front of our past site, um, and you the the past site is just that rise to your left. Um, to show the extent of what willows are there and, of course, what willows are not in front of our Ohiti Pa site. Um, or if you came from the axis, um, which is about a kilometre and a half, this demonstrates the full extent of length, uh, probably about a kilometre of this 
uh, gravel extraction program that's going on. And I've just highlighted Ohiti Pa, which is right down towards where that top end of that macaron is. Um, and here again, it shows the detriment of the deep scars that go into um, the gravel extraction program next to the main stem. And so it goes, um, looking eastward towards the Fern Hill Bridge. <coughs> um, it's all in the name of gravel stacks that are being um, built. Um, there was a lovely rendition that um, Tahita had given in so far as the whakapapa of, um, of, our, of, our, um, of our gravels. There's a saying that goes, uh, e kore a rā kāhore, um, i te haere ki te kore, a rā, um, a para, sorry, I'll rephrase that again, i kore a para whenua me, i te haere ki te kore, a rā kāhore. If it wasn't for the gravels, the stones, the clays, then water will not flow. So, Here's, here's a, a really indictment on the nature and extent of our, of our, oh by golly, I think I've gone and put up the wrong one, hang on, there's some more, just give me a moment. Bear with me, oh my god, brother. I'm just wondering whether or not the guy on the IT has got my original... <coughs> Oh, no, you haven't, eh? Uh, I'm just... I think I've lost it. Something seems to have gone wrong here. Okay. It's not coming up. Sorry. I want to make reference to... Here you go. Most of my stuff's disappeared on here. Right, yeah. Um, I'll just take that a little bit more further just to show and expose the nature and extent of the gravel extraction that's going on. Um, it, whilst the PPC9 may not give reference to um, gravel extraction, the RPS does. And I'll just um, highlight a couple of other matters just to bring uh, what the RPC has to say about this particular activity. Um, the Taifenua water consent which Maori had referred to had been transferred um, from this particular area. Um, it, um, this was taken about three weeks ago. Um, by inference that the main stem now does not flow um, in the direction um, towards Ruiz Hill, um, we believe and say, and of course the science when it was undertaken through the through the uh, provision uh, of setting up um, ponds not too far away um, from this particular site and back in the day when Dr Dravid um, undertook groundwater studies um, uh, uh, he leaves and along comes an American um, who counters um, those particular groundwater findings um, he then basically says, look, it's going to take us a wee while um, while I'm here to actually rework some of those groundwater, uh, particularly the um, groundwater feed um, coming from the aquifer, um, and completely changed what Dr Dravid had made mention back in the time. Now, given that um, our water consent has been uh, transferred in the hope that it was going to provide a flow down the paritua to Tare, whatever, and we took a bit of flack from our whānau um, because of the relationship that it was potentially attempting, um, well, undertook uh, with Mike Glazebrook. What we are now finding is that, in fact, this catchment is made up with the recent science um, and it's coming uh, through some groundwater isotope, isotope research uh, indicating that this catchment has got more um, more uh, rainwater um, in this particular catchment than um, having water come from the Ngaruroro. And when you start to see the, the groundwater takes um, on record uh, with the Hooks Bay Regional Council that 93% of the Paritua 
um, ground are, t are taken through groundwater tanks. Uh, it's really a, a detriment in terms of where this new science is pointing um, to tell us more certainty in the science space. So there are really good aspects of some of the science that's making our way to contribute towards our own mohiotanga, our own matauranga, in regards to ground groundwater recharge into our, our hoku nui, into our muriwai ho, and that by dit of moving the main stem, whether it was done purposely, and I would like to hear whether it was done or manipulated, this really shows you the extent of the this side of the river um, edge uh, completely dry. This is the former site of where we used to extract and put back into the awa. That was our cultural collateral of taking on that particular water consent at that time. Um, we, we, we've seen in the earlier slides that were made by um, our, our, my whanau from, um, from Umahu. Uh, these slides represent a couple of things. Um, one, it shows in the foreground the nature and extent of what size rocks um, of rakahure uh, in terms of um, grey, the grey wackle rocks that we sit here, um, which is part of the family of rakahure, um, particularly the fatu aho, grey wackle sizing of these rocks are not at Roy's Hill today. If they've been extracted and if they're caught up in, in some of those big piles, but look at the nature and extent of some of those piles in the background. Um, the extent of how deep into a waterway that the, that the extraction and the digging actually goes. You know, it's very hard for us when we go to the traditional places to get our watercress, for example, in most places, we're looking down about 10 foot into the ground. And back where, in our time, we were able to access watercress not by going down 10 foot, 10, you know, almost down, into um, accessing or, or um, collecting, picking our watercress, um, it's become quite a common feature in amongst all of our waterways, creeks and drains. So um, I just want to conclude by saying that our pānoko, this particular, this particular um, native species, um, he, this is almost our, our canary in the mine, and that our pānoko is very prominent in this Roy's Hill area space of Marae Kākoho. The females on the left occupy this space and the males occupy the space, they say, towards the water edge where the estuarine comes, up, comes in down towards Pākofai. Now, it's going back to this particular um, slide to just indicate that the current minimum flow of 2,400 litres per second set at Omahu Bridge, uh, with that measuring rod, provides a habitat of survival of 44%, 2,400 litres per second, a 44% um, um, habitat uh, for the survival of our pānoko. Um, to get 100% is 4,400 litres per second. These were some of the debates and arguments that took place during the course of the um, um, tank workshops, but we go unheard. And as I heard one of my whanaunga today, the upokororo, which is extinct, if we, if we disregard this really, really important um, species of ours, then we're going to lose it. This is our canary in the mine shaft. Just finally, I want to say that um, along with my friend um, Maori Black, um, over the course of many years, even prior to 1991, but, but more so as a marker, the RMA coming in, we've been the antagonistic submitter 
going to hearings with regards to um, water consents um, throughout all of our catchments, um, primarily around the Ngaruroro, um, and we got to be pushed back every time by a hearings committee in that they were saying that what we were asking for in terms of rule changes were going to be put before, would be put before a plan change process. We're now finding that we've waited all of this time. We've had the tolerance, the patience uh, to say um, in our submissions before you, we've waited all this line, we have got We've got insight, experience, and certainly a major contribution to say things have changed, and here's a way of actually remedying that. And we still go unheard. We are not a stakeholder. And I would hate to think that this commission goes away and they haven't heard the mana whenua coming across as your treaty partner. And so, I'm making a particular call that we've waited all of this time to have this conversation to effect change. Kia ora. Uh, before I ask the panel for questions, I, it, it seems important to, to respond particularly to your last point. Uh, we're an independent commission. Um, and delegated powers under the Resource Management Act, and there is a special place. There is recognition and provision for the, the role of and participation of tangata whenua and resource management processes. So I want to say that first. And secondly, that the word stakeholder, as I can remember, doesn't, isn't referred to in the Resource Management Act, and it certainly won't be a term to describe tangata whenua and the mana whenua who have attended these hearings. So just as for a matter of record, that's, that's our position. But I'll open it up for questions. I know I've got a few questions, but perhaps um, Dr Ryder, if you had any questions, start at your end. Wondering whether you've um, uh, read the reply in the, the 42A addendum from, I think it's uh, Mr Fake, regarding the um, the the habitat relationship well the relationship between habitat and and the the torrent fish you referred to there the forty four percent there's some I think they're implying that there, you may have misunderstood the concept of of the effects of that lower flow on on the survival of that species. Uh, as opposed to the just the amount of habitat that's available for that species, which does not necessarily mean um, that they're going to die or you know be killed as a result of a of a lesser flow. Do, mm -hmm. do you do understand that? Uh, and have you read have you read that? Oh, I, I picked up on that particular point. Yes, I did. Mm. I s still believe that um, um, that there is still an amount of science that needs to meet our understanding of our mohiotanga matauranga. That's kind of where I see it. And of course, um, um, Dan, Dan Fake, uh, Dan, makes reference to that to say otherwise. Yep. Good. Uh, just a few questions. Um, Panoko, which is a which is a new word for me because I don't think we have that particular fish in, that, in my local area, um, which is probably a bit of a shame. Um, but I was I was just interested in knowing where the, where the, if you had any more quoted about where the name comes from. I well, there's so much history. No, I've only just um, come across this little species. Mm. I guess the, when you look at the name of Ngarururu and of course mm. its relationship back to Upokoruru, yes. um, there are some significant native species that I make, I make um, uh, reference to inside of this, including amongst other things, i Nanga Papa and you know, and Kokapu. Mm -hmm. um, not much has been said about this particular um, species. 
Um, and it only came up in, um, in from when I think we were taking, um, undertaking the Ngarururu Values and Attributes report that Mr. Black uh, made reference to as part of the species mm. countdown. So I can't tell you any more than what I um, am aware of just coming through that process in the last 10 years, yeah. to be honest. Yeah. In a similar vein, I, I, I quite, like there's, there's good when you have analogies and you always remember our canary in the mine and I couldn't, I couldn't help thinking, uh, are you suggesting that this is, a, this is an indicator species? Yes, yeah. sorry, yeah. And that, that could be part of a, of a framework of... The, I suppose the habitat, the quality of habitat for that particular species reflected of the Modi of a particular area where that was appropriate. Uh, absolutely, mm. and more so in reference, I'm not sure whether or not Dr. F um, um, the respective scientist, um, it's these, this particular species is, is found in this area. And I give it contrast in regards to the operations that are currently going on um, and I did make reference in so far as the values that this plan is um, intent on having to um, um, ensure that such ecology and habitat is not going to be any, um, uh, not going to be threatened. Well, if this activity is actually going on, and the the um, Hooks Bay Regional Council have come out and they have slapped the operator over the knuckles. Um, I'm combining those two situations together, you know, the habitat along with the operations going on in the same place. Cool, thank you. Um, at K, there's um, the letter K in your evidence in chief on page, your page 13, and it just talks about um, the life supporting capacity and ecosystem processes in our indigenous species. A direct example of this is the following, and then there's a list in Roman numerals yep. down. And I was, are you, has this come specifically from a particular report, or is this um, just in terms of the references that you've got there in the numbers? Um, it had come from a report. Yep. Um, I think Kate MacArthur may have been um, party to that. Um, the content of this and I've uh, basically plucked it out uh, it was in relation to some of the discussions that were going on within the tank um, forum um, that this started to emerge in, in amongst that discussion might I also add that um, as Maury had alluded to when, when these discussions had actually um, given rise um, there was a very limited amount of time, I guess. And one of the really good things about some of the science input that did come, um, it, I'm sure it provided myself in particular a much better insight as to what the habitat and the ecology around uh, these particular places and habitats were. Okay. Um, and then just over the page, this is at uh, F on page 14, and there's... You just referred to the uh, regional council referring the Kaitiaki Guardian as the council being referred to as Kaitiaki Guardians, and, uh, and you may have seen in the, the addendum, well, a uh, yep. further report, the section 42A report, the addendum, there's been recommended amendments to yes. those where, where that occurs. Yeah, yes. Were you were you happy with those? Well, I think it needed to ensure that the, the whole, here again, is mm. definitions. Mm. We need to be very clear when one starts to apply uh, a name without understanding its full meaning. Yeah. I mean, it's a very sacred word, kaitiaki, and yeah. it's not being used in a way by which to say, we're the guardians over the space in general. Yeah, I, I think um, what certainly my view was that the Regional Council was acknowledging that submission point and... Yeah and making an appropriate recommendation. Um, I didn't have any other questions, but perhaps um, Dr. Marker or Maru, do you have any questions? I don't have any questions. Oh. Hey, thank you very much for your time, and thank you for your patience. Kia ora. Thank Kapoi. you. Kia ora. Oh, well. oh, well. Kia ora. 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 Tut
tira mai ga i wi ta 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 e kwai a te ba ma tang a me te a ro ha e nga i wi kia ta pa ta hi kia ko ta hi la ta 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 e a we ta 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 hu ri ti a ki a ma he over here. Kia ora whānau. Te nā tātou. Uh, our next uh, presentation is from Mihiroa Marae. And uh, while they're making their way up to... The the desk just to acknowledge that song. Uh, maybe I'm showing my age of a particular generation yeah, and maybe a couple of the other members, but that was yeah, the yeah. first Te Reo Māori song that I ever learnt. Okay, <laughs> so it's always got a special place in my heart. Kia ora. Kia ora. Uh, ko takitimu te waka. Ai whanau e wata takitimu kanu and tamati ariki nui. Ko kahura aniki te maunga. Aniki is my mountain. Rawa ko te ko ngā rero ngā awa. Are my rivers. Mihiro is the meeting house. Nga mihi nui ki ngā whanau. I acknowledge all the families that I gathered here today. Families of this marae for your support on this issue. Thank you all. A definition of adverse effects is where adverse environmental impacts refer to any harmful effects on the environment, such as the degradation of soil, water and or air. These changes can reduce flora or fauna, habitat or make the local environment socially unacceptable and at times inhospitable. Impacts such as over allocation of Y is becoming detrimental to our waterways. The degradation of our awa, our puna, our kai source and our modi are becoming apparent with the continuous support of water taking and manipulation. Our awa and puna are paru. Our kai source have become limited and the Māori o te wai is affected as the paru stops the health of our wai, which in turn stops the health of our people. We want our young ones, our future generations, to be able to swim in and eat from our waterways and for them to be able to know what kōra, inanga and especially tuna look like. Our tuna not only are they an important food source, but culturally they enable our tipuna to come into the interior of our whenua and live because we followed them up our water system. The land was hostile and our tūpuna didn't know how to live in it or what kai was available, so remained co coastal until they followed our tuna. Our mukapuna are the future of tomorrow and they should not have to see these taonga species exist in a book only. Noreira tēnā koutou Tēnā tātou kato, tēnei te mihi atu ki a koutou i tēnei wā. Ki a koutou te te mana whenua, rahungai te rangi koutou o mātou tuākana. Hei manaki, hei tiaki i a tātou kato i tēnei rā. Ngā mihi nui ki a koutou kato. I acknowledge you all. Ngā mihi nui ki a koutou hira. I also acknowledge you hira. Koutou hira. You. 
a real authority in our tribe to battle correctly and truthfully on behalf of all of us all the time. So I acknowledge you. From us, your younger siblings of Ngāti Mihiroa. Here I stand to speak about the perspective of Ngāti Mihiroa alone. This is a line of descent of Kahungunu. Out came Ngare Ngare. Out came Tamatera. And out came Hine Te Moa. So I stop at Hine Te Moa because Ngāti Mihiro, Mihiro Marae, besides uh, at Te Paki Paki Tanga or Hine Te Moa, so we look at our tipuna in te moa. We look at the occasion as to how te paki paki tango in te moa came to be. In te moa is uh, comes from a chiefly line, ngare ngare, and at a time when uh, she was bathing in the Awanui stream in the Awa there, uh, a war party. Uh, came through that area in a war party of Hikawera Tuatai. As uh, warriors are trained to be quiet, Hineta Moa and her kaitiaki, her servant, didn't hear them advancing. And so as our tipuna Hineta Moa was bathing in the stream, uh, she was caught naked. Um, quickly, when they realised that the war party had um, arrived and seen her in her, um, in her tinana and her uh, nakedness, um, her, her whanaunga, Tahatera, quickly gave a kurawai to cover her, a kapaki paki, to keep her, uh, to dry herself and to cover herself. However, the men of the war party uh, saw her tinana, saw her nakedness, and continued to chatter and talk about her. To stop the chattering, Hikawera Tuatahi, who was the chief that led the war party, <coughs> took his kurawai and wrapped it around Hineta Moa. That stopped the uh, chattering of the war party, and that's how um, the hononga and the marriage of Hine Te Moa and Hikawera Tuatahi came. So, kaputa mai te ingoa te pakipaki tanga o Hine Te Moa. And that is how we get the name Te Pakipaki Tanga or Hine Te Moa. Significant for us at Pakipaki because it refers to the awa that our tipuna bathed in. So if you go back, our tipuna bathed in awanui. It says in our ingoa, te paki paki tanga o hine te moa. From Hine Te Moa came Te Whatu Iapiti. Te Whatu Iapiti, ka moe ia ki a Te Huhuti. Who married Te Huhuti? Kaputa Te Wawahanga, ka moe ia ki Te Ao Patuwhare. Kaputa Te Rangi Kawhiua. Mai Te Rangi Kawhiua, ka moe ia Horongai Te Rangi. This is the line of descent of Te Rahunga o Te Rangi. This is our connection to Mangaroa Marae, the older ancestral line of Nga Rahunga i Te Rangi. Rangi kāwhiua, kā moia horongai Te Rangi, 
Kapata is to marry. Go to Manawakawa. I acknowledge all of us of Hire Tauga, the descendants of Te Manawakawa. Te rangi ka fiwa ka moia korongai te rangi. These two married. Te upoko iri. Te upoko iri. Te upoko iri of Omahu. Stern Hill. Te taho te awa o Ngaruroro. The Ngaruroro side of the river. I acknowledge you all. Te rahu te rangi ka fiwa ka moia korongai te rangi. Ka puta te mihiro suatahi. Mihiro Atuatahi, and this is us, the descendants of the ancestor, the younger line of the ancestors so who I, I have just named. So I just want to go to uh, the sisters. Hamatau Tipuna Mihiro Atuatahi, our ancestor Mihiro Atuatahi, uh, and Terahunga Iterangi. These sisters. Married Terehunga. And the union of Terehunga and Terahunga Terangi, Terehunga and Mihiro Tuatahi, the role that Terehunga had was to protect the lands as a warrior. That was his role. That's our resource management. The role of Mihiro Tuatahi e Rahungai Te Rangi, one of the many roles they held as landowners, so you have four main landowners within Here Taunga, Te Rahungai Te Rangi, Manawakawa, Te Upokowiri, Mihiro Tuatahi. Landowners of Here Taunga and Te Rehunga, who was uh, joined with these sisters to help protect those lands. When you have the lands, you have the awa and you have the waters. One of the roles that the sisters had was to feed uh, Te Rehunga and the war party. And so they uh, would do that by making sure that they had the kai and they prepared the kai for Te Rehunga. And so you have Te Whata a Te Rehunga. And in our mōtetea, e toi te rā, this also is stated in our mōtetea. Te Whata a Te Rehunga, Te Whata a Te Rehunga. And so the role of Mihiro Tuatahi and Te Rahunga Te Rangi was to ensure that the sustainability of Te Rehunga and his war party was maintained. That's our resource management. Mihiro Tuatahi, Kaputamai te kite kai. Mihiro Tuatahi, Kamuia te rama fakura. You married te rama fakura. You beget te weka whare i toko. Kamoia te ahi te ahi rauruhe. Kapu tamai mihiro tuarua. Kamoia tamaiwaia. Kapu tamai merehine te ka. Kapu tamai merehine te ka. Is buried at Tuki Tuki Awa. Kapu tamai poke poke tangi ora. Anei te whakāhua o Puke Puke Tangiora. This is tangi the photograph of so Puke Puke Tangiora. And so I share the kōrero of our tipuna Puke Puke Tangiora. And uh, in the times of depression, our tipuna gathered the kai. It took the kai to the centre of Here Taunga in the township and helped to feed the people. With kai, you need clean water. And so that's one of the, the manaki, uh, or evidence of manaki, that our tipuna puke puke tangi ora had for the people. Ahako he Māori, he Pākeha rānei, whether they be Māori or non-Māori, aroha, patu manawa, didn't matter if you were Māori or Pākeha, she took the kai she had, 
from her lands, took it into the centre of the town and helped to feed the people at a time of depression. Poke poke tangiora, kamoya mohi te atahi koea, ka pukuta te paratene te akunga mohi, kamoya peti te rangi, kiri te kaihote, no reira ki a koutou mā te whanau te wairo, nā mihi nui ki a koutou tēnei. So to you, the families of te wairo, I acknowledge you today. Mai peti te rangi, piri hi kaihote, ka puta mai, taha te rā. You beget tamatera. This is one of the descendants of tamatera. I acknowledge my cousin Jill Munro at this time, who descends from Merehineteka, who has lived many of her time researching the effects of the environment or of your mahi on our environment at Pakipaki. And so a lot of this kōrero that I share has been gifted and shared with me to share with you today. So I acknowledge my cousin Jill Munro. Are upoko tohara mohi mihiro tuatoru anai matau Here we are, uri, the descendants of mihiro tuatoru, the third. And you've heard the submission of my cousin here, Beverly Tehuia, an expert in the field of Māori health. And so I acknowledge the works of my cousin here. Also in the line of Mihiro Tuatoru is Tiopera, Tamaiwaya, Kireni and Harata. Mihiro Tuatoru, Kamoya Karanema Hapaku Allison. Karanema Hapaku Allison. Also uh, married. Pikiahu Pikiahuya. Haputa Mai Mato Tufano or Mihiro Tehuya. Those are our ancestors of Mihiroa Te Huia. Which brings me down to my kōrero. Uh, my uh, Mihiro rawa ko uh, Karanema Hapuku Ellison, kaputa mai taku mama ko puke puke, puke tangiora Ellison, kamo ia ki a tamaturanga huata, kaputa mai ko ku uh, ko taku tuakana ko eri. Irihana Mihiro Komona Huata, Rawa Ko Ariki Tamatsuranga Huata, Hekone, Ia. So, at the age of eight, I returned home from living in uh, Sydney in Australia. We were born there, my uh, sister and I. And here you can see our Fare Kai Puke Puke Tangiora. I lived in the house next door with my nan for some time, Mihiro. And living in Paki Paki, the, the experiences we had, this is my best friend, Beverly. Her and I are best friends. She's my first cousin. Her father is the brother to my mum. But that's how we are in Paki Paki. Our best friends are our first cousins or cousins. And so in the submission that my niece um, submitted on page seven, I gave my kōrero regarding my experiences growing up in Paki Paki. And Beverly and I, uh, we would daily roam around the streets of Paki Paki as two streets. <laughs> but um, that's how we were, and we connected up with all our other cousins. And most often we connected up um, at the creek. Under the bridge, there's a photo there. And our cousin would go earling. We would often be at the back, because the creek was at the back of our house, and we would swim in there, we would play in there. We did all those things that tamariki would do when you're by the water. My aunties, my uh, mum, my uncles, they ate kai from that same awa. 
And if I refer to the whakahua up there, all the, um, the paintings that you see there on our parekai displays all the kai that our aunties, uncles, our nans will get from the awa. Today, it's not there. So we, the only reference we have at Mihiro Marae is the whakahua that is around our wharekai. I want to talk about a kaitiaki that our people, our tohunga, put in the awa. And the kaitiaki was placed there to protect the, the people of Pakipaki because there was a time when the awa used to flood. And at that time, they didn't have bridges, and so they would try to get from one side of the awa to the other by swimming. And this is at the back of Haungarea Marae. And at that time when it was flooded, uh, it was disastrous for a lot of our tamariki back then, and a uh, few people drowned. So the tohunga placed the kaitiaki in the awa called Pāpāwai. <coughs> Pāpāwai is still there today. We believe that. Struggling to look after us, the descendants of the Pakipaki Tango Hine Te Moa. Struggling because it's unable to swim freely because of the low water levels. Struggling because the water is paru. I liken this to a car. You put the wrong petrol in the car, hey, the car breaks down. You put paru in our water, something's going to break down. And it's us, the people. It's not just Māori. It's not just Māori. It's everybody. So our bridge pa whānau have given you waters for your uh, first the reality is that they bought it for you. And it's been manufactured in a bottle. Ai te wai. Had the waters been clean, they probably would have got it out of the tap. So to show their manaki, they went and bought some clean water for us. We hope. <laughs> as clean as the bottle is. And so this kōrero that I share is from our own experiences at Mahiro, and, and this is our hapu. There are many more. As you can see, our whare is, um, is happy because a lot of us came to uh, be together. We're grateful that we still have a strong uh, kinship as a whānau, as a hapu, but we still have challenges. When it's time of tangihanga or hui, the kai that you see on our whare kai is no longer there. Our tamariki are no longer swimming in the awa. I personally didn't see the kaura that is on our whare kai. I personally have not seen the coda. So when you, when you think about it, it starts to become a story as opposed to a way of life. So some of the kōrero I share has come from the kōrero of my whanauna, my of family, my and my so family. Um, putting that into the mix. Now I want to share this part with you. This is an eagle feather. This eagle feather was gifted to me by the First Nations people in Ontario at Six Nations. And this eagle feather represents the whanaungatanga, represents the relationship. 
And in 2005, when I was travelling there as part of Kahurangi, I was invited <coughs> to Thunder Mountain for a women's retreat. And the purpose of the women's retreat was to heal the woman to heal the waters. So when I went there and I participated in that, at the end, they gave me this feather. If you know about First Nations in North America, the most prized taonga is an eagle feather. He tino taonga tenei ki So this is a very prized possession and taonga that I have and that connects me back to the waters in Ontario because I was part of that ceremony. This, this healing is happening worldwide by all indigenous peoples. And here in Here Taonga, what we are saying is that we have the way to move forward to heal the waters. We have the wairua that's going to help heal the waters. And if you allow us to be part of that process, then we can make it happen for everybody. Because if you're not well, I'm not well. If, if I'm drinking paru water, you're drinking paru water. If my kai is no longer there, your kaya is no longer there. So I share that with you from my ngako. It is about sustainability. We as mihiro, we know what our mātauranga is. We know what whanaungatanga is. We know what rangatiratanga is. And we know the impact that our environment has had on us as a whanau and us as Ngāti Mihiro. And when one of our tuakana, Ngāti Rahungai Te Rangi, are at a loss around their water, that affects us too. So we support all the submissions of Rahungai Te Rangi, Ngāti Pōporo, Te Upoko Uri, Te Rangi Koyanake, Te Mana Wakawa, they are our siblings. So we support that. And so I stand here humbly on behalf of my mihiro whanau to share that kōrero. The awa was the way in which we sustained ourselves and we want to have it restored. So with that, I give it back to my niece and um, kia ora tātou. Thank you all. So in conclusion, Ngāti Mihiro seek changes around water allocations, provisions, meaning we want less water taken out of our kahumoko, kare, karewarewa turamoe awanui, so there is enough left to sustain and support our taonga species and providing the habitat of life. We seek changes that irrigation is restricted to certain times of the year only. We seek changes for decision making around water allocation and that our whānau are able to have a say in processes that are allocate water from our awa or aquifers. We seek changes for water quality in our awa, in our puna, and that we can carry out our cultural practices safely and the kai we harvest from the way is safe to eat. We seek changes of less water taken from the aquifers, so more water is left to totoko our puna that feed into and replenish our awa. We seek protection, partnership and participation. Te Māori o Te wai is our life essence, it's where life begins. And with the way water has been treated, life essence is becoming lifeless. We have a responsibility to uphold as kaitiaki, and we have a taonga to protect. Nō reira, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou katoa. Uh, before I open up for questions, um, I'd just like to thank you for a very articulate uh, in moving submission, um, you don't often have the privilege of 
um, hearing um, the recital of a person's whakapapa. Where I come from, it's a very special and personal thing. And for you to be generous of spirit to share your whakapapa with us was um, very moving. And I'd like to thank you very much for sharing the beautiful stories of, of your ancestors uh, with us. Uh, um, both in Te Reo Māori and in English because we had um, te amas doing the translations for us. So thank you very much for sharing that. And I'm going to ask the panellists if they had any questions. Uh, we may not because not only is your submission generous in terms of some of the lovely stories of the whānau and the river, but also your submission today. So thank you very much. Okay. I stand to acknowledge you all. It is only right that I stand and acknowledge my friend, Tama. We went to school together. I wasn't free to come back and return to his funeral. So here today I mourn him. I acknowledge you, the family. All of us, the grandfather Tipine. All of those have departed, but I still mourn them. That is why I stand here to acknowledge you. I don't have any questions for these submitters. I am standing. I'm standing to acknowledge Ngāti Kahununu and those who have left us. And to all, thank you. <laughs> I don't have a song, it's all, they're all gone. Uh, kia ora everybody, we've got uh, Ngāti Parau Hapu Trust. And do we have Tahita Henderson here, who could be afterwards? Okay. Uh, Des Ratima. Okay, great. We might be. <coughs> ah, te tiro whakarunga hau ki tō ki maunga me te pātū atu atu ko hikurangi me o tātara I look up to my ancestry mountain o tātara Ah, heke whakararo ki ngā wai kaukau a kui mā koroma The swimming rivers of my ancestors Te wai o mahurangi ki tāu o tū tai kuri Te waka tapu o tā ki te mutu waka Kā tai te awa ki te moana nui ā ki wa 
te awa whakairo, whenua kainoa ki te ngutu awa. Ko more more te kaitiaki i raru i a matarua hau e kaukau ana kaitoa ko pānia te tipua nō te iwi ponaturi. Alongside pānia, a te iwi ponaturi. Ko tōku nei marae ki waio hiki. Ai marae, waio hiki. Ke reira ko tōku hapū ko Ngāti Pārau. Here's my sub-tribe, Ngāti Pārau. Mā takitaki ana au i te rahi o tōku iwi o Ngāti Kahununu ko tāri hā te moana nui te tangata. Ka hui tahi a tāri hā te moana nui rawa ko pītaka tō tupeka. Ka tahi ka puta ko mātou ko ngā uri o Ngāti Pārau. Nō pītaka tō tupeka ko e nei toko rua. Nō tāri hā te moana nui. A tēnei, anā rere te whānau ko hui hui mai te rangi nei. A ko Ngāti Pārau tēnei mihi kauana kia koutou ka toa. A huri noi tō tātou nei whare a tāhua. All in this, seated in this beautiful house, to the commissioners, the councillors, and to all. Thank you. Atena tato, kete tau toko te mihi ko mihi a kia ko te mga mana penua a kai au tu o te tau papa nei. To the people steering this meeting. Good to see you, though. Thank you all. Who am I? This is my name. I am from Waiohiki. So, uh, uh, thanks for allowing us to present on behalf of our Hapu Ngāti Pārau. Um, our submission today. Uh, we're going to go through our submission. Uh, there's, only, there, there's only a few points there, but the purpose of going through our submission is to... Uh, uh, to not, not reiterate the, the points, but to, to provide some context behind uh, the points that we've put in there. Uh, so, uh, Ngāti Pārau Hapu Trust uh, thank the Hawke's Bay Regional Council for the opportunity to submit on the tank plane change. Uh, Ngāti Pārau uh, Hapu tr Trust is a registered Hapu authority. Uh, our areas of interest are in the Napier City area, obviously Waiohiki and in the southern end of Te Whanganui Aorotu. Uh, in the lower reaches of the Tuta Kuriawa. Uh, we're one of seven hapu that uh, reside in and around the Te Whanganui Ao Orotu. Uh, our marae or waihuki is located directly adjacent to the Tuta Kuriawa, and we live under the shadow of our maunga, uh, Otatara, and Hukurangi. Our hapu have a legacy of uh, engaging in restoration mahi within our taiao, um, in the last five years, uh, we've planted tens of thousands of native plants along our awa, established wetlands uh, and uh, whitebait spawning sites. We've also had uh, uh, written uh, a joint hapu management plan, the Ngā Hapu o Tūtaikuri Awa Management and Enhancement Plan, and also the Tūtaikuri Cultural Values Report. Uh, we do wish to raise some concerns in the level of consideration uh, in regards to our our management plan that was submitted in 2014. Uh, we spent five years putting together that hapu management plan in the detailed um, uh, our issues, uh, but also the solutions to those issues, and a lot of those sit inside the, plan, uh, the tank plan change. It is true that we did sit on the tank um, process However, another concern is the level of engagement that um, we were afforded as mana whenua, uh, as a part of the process, namely that, um, that we felt that we were stakeholders as a part of the process and not as treaty partners. The reason for raising these points is that in hindsight, that I'm assuming that there'll be lessons learned as a part of this process and for processes moving forward as a part of future plan changes. Uh, that won't reoccur. Uh, so, moving into the matters requiring relief uh, that are stated inside our submission, uh, we have concern with the clarity of the process to engage a regulatory approach if an individual within the industry program or collectives failed to meet specific limits or management measures. The details in regards to this process is not quite clear and it's always the devil in the detail. And so our understanding as a part of the, um, the action planning and the templates that are going to be required 
uh, to inform these different programs is where um, I think the regulatory approach needs to be uh, closely um, or, or, or must be detailed. Uh, moving on to the next point, there is no clear mechanism to enable Matauranga Māori assessment and monitoring with regards to resource consents. Uh, there is little mention in regards to customary matters, mahinga kai species impacts on cultural use that are written within the rules. Uh, mainly uh, in the columns um, detailed matters for control or discretion and also uh, the column with condition standards and terms. A reason why this is important is that it triggers and requires action and consideration. The rules are where the rubber hits the road and if it's not stated in there um, or there's comfort that uh, specific reference to cultural matters such as mahinga kai uh, and um, specific res uh, reference to cultural use uh, be included in our rules. I think I, I, I controlled effort and it was only in one of the rules so if we can uh, if we can concentrate uh, or if we can include them um, and more of mainly the discharges and land use uh, columns, uh, that would be great. Uh, consent applications. Uh, new amendments or renewals require identification and information on how Te Ao Māori is provided for and in a manner that is consistent with Te Mano Te Wai. It's, um, I'm, I'm kind of referencing the kind of uh, the detail or the, the comment I just um, in the, just mentioned earlier. Um, not sure. uh, ensuring mana whenua hapu values have been adequately identified, included and taken into effect within the farm plans, collectives and industry programs. What's not clear is that an adequate level of inclusion of mana whenua values and actions required to restore Modi will be included in the farm, manage, uh, farm plans, collectives and industry programs. Uh, it's our advice that a specific person holds a role and is dedicated to ensuring that an adequate level of inclusion of mana whenua values are in these programs. It is also recommended that mana whenua be added to the partners or advisors in the uh, policy 24, which is the monitoring programs uh, associated with the, um, my understanding of the, uh, of the different industry programs to ensure that um, uh, the monitoring included within those groups include um, things like mahinga kai, native plant species, etc. Uh, that the interest of mana whenua hapu in the allocation of available ground and surface water is not recognised or addressed in this plan. Uh, acknowledging that uh, there is an allocation of high flow. However, if there is uh, a remaining allocation of water left in the tutaikuri, that there should be consideration for mana whenua hapu to be allotted the remaining allocation of groundwater. Low flow settings are raised to achieve hapu values and increase from 2,000 to 2,800 low flow um, setting. It's acknowledged that there is a raise from 2,000 to 2,500. However, in the values uh, report and in the Ngā Hapu or Tutaikuri plan, uh, the level limit uh, we had requested was 2,800. So I think what's being proposed is 2,500. Better protection of springs and surface water recharge. Springs that provide recharge to surface water, their contribu contributions to surface water require protection. As written, as springs gradually diminish due to reduction in aquifer pressure due to groundwater abstraction, then they go into reversal and draw water from the streams and rivers. It's important that we maintain the habitat for our key tributaries that run from our freshwater springs. The level of protection required to maintain flows of these key springs. Uh, and I uh, note here that our, the name um, of our marae, Waiohiki, in the area in which we stay is, is named after a spring, Waiohiki, the, the hiki of the water. 
spring. So um, uh, really important that we maintain um, the flow of our springs. The tributaries that flow from uh, the Napier City area into Te Whanganui Aorotu. It's important that there are set limits on these tributaries or streams that often are seen uh, overgrown in algal. Uh, the part, of, for example, the Parimu, the old Tutaikuri Riverbed, the Taipo, these streams are provided with limits uh, and get afforded the same water quality uh, attributes as, uh, as other streams. That stormwater consents hold a maximum duration of 10 years as systems are due for renewal and replacement. We know that new technologies are coming online and that 30-year uh, time frames for consents are a long time um, before you're able to upgrade your systems. So enabling or, or having a trigger inside the resource consent or shorter time frame to enable for new technologies to be uh, implemented on sites for stormwater treatment and such, um, in our view, is a, a sensible approach. Uh, overlay sensitive catchment areas. Uh, that it's important that uh, that we believe that there's a lack of promotion of indigenous vegetation for reforestation and for riparian and erosion controlled areas. There are references to our native species, uh, but we, we can believe that that can be beefed up inside the plan, uh, specifically for erosion prone areas. Often willows and poplars are selected for uh, um, for managing erosion prone areas and true that they are effective with their root structures however in the long term native species are um, we believe are the solution uh, so promoting that inside the, the, the plan we believe is important uh, the lack of protection for indigenous veget vegetation outside the 10 metre proximity to rivers uh, also important. Uh, and that a consent applications and amendments and renewals are subject to the most recent rules and regulations existing or historic conditions associated with the consent uh, are implemented. I'd like to uh, thank you for uh, hearing our, our kōrero today. Um, I guess that those are quite um, direct points. Mm -hmm. uh, so hopefully that was helpful in, um, in, in identifying key points that we'd like to have amended uh, inside the plan change. Kia ora. Was there anything else you wanted to add before I ask the panel for questions? Come on. Do we have any questions? Can I just check that your paragraph eight, you're referring to the, um, sorry, your paragraph 4.6 that you're referring to the Tupacuri at Pukatapu, is that correct for those flows? Uh, yes, the Tutaikuri. Thank you. And the, Catchments listed in paragraph 14, those are the Napier stormwater catchments, is that correct as well? Yes. And so they all drain directly to the Ahuriri estuary? Flow to the two correct. Uh, to the, the Ahuriri. Thank you. The tradi so traditionally they were, uh, you know, a, a large wetlands or large estuary. And so over the, you know, since the 31 earthquake, They've been uh, refined over time, and so an area that was what once plentiful on Mainga Kai is just slowly being eroded away to a fine channel, 
And so the whakapapa is still there for the tuna species, for the enanga that occupy those areas, but the, the barriers that they need to go through and the way that those waterways are treated is pretty much uh, treatment devices is, is what we need changed. Because this, the, they've got names, they're, there's a historic whakapapa to them, but they're not being treated that way. They're historically being treated like, like drains. And so when you're referring to the tutukura, you're referring to the original course rather than the present course, the course that ran into uh, the Ahariri estuary. Is that correct? Or are you referring to, I know you've referred to Pukutapu, but are you referring to the current course in particular for the, tu for the whole tutukura? Yes. Thank you. And then the references to the Ahariri, uh, the, the waterways that once connected to the old tutukuri. Thank you. Kia ora, TK. Um, <coughs> you raised um, uh, an issue that few others have touched on yet, but it underpins a lot of what this sort of exercise rests on, and this is the issue of treaty partnership as opposed to being a stakeholder. And I wondered whether you might have some suggestions on how this plan might better reflect that, the fact that it's a treaty partnership we're talking about here. Māori are not here, just a, another stakeholder. Can you, can you give us your thoughts on how that might be better represented in this plan change? Um, from, from our view, uh, we had created a hapu management plan that quite clearly stated, you know, the, the outcomes that we desire. And so I guess we kind of put it on a platter and um, we, not, we, weren't, we didn't necessarily have that plan um, given the mana that it deserved as a part of the process. So I think if we had a... Uh, strong relationship in, in regards to implementation of that plan, mm. uh, then for us that would be uh, a, a better process. There was an undercurrent in your statement, in your evidence, your early evidence on, on uh, your view on how, how much was taken out of your management plan, your, our money management plan, and that's contributed to the way that the plan change looks at the moment. Do you want to comment on that as well? well yeah, I think the concern was that um, the I think there was one 30-minute hui having a quarter around how the hapu management plan had been um, reflected inside the, the tank plan change. And so that for us that was a level of concern that uh, we had raised before, but we would have thought that at the minimum we would have had uh, you know, an extensive period of time and uh, looking over our plan, looking over the, the tank plan and saying, look, here's where, the, here's where these uh, outcomes are met. Um, so there wasn't that direct conversation. There, there, there were reports done where it says, oh, this is how it might you know, um, meet these values. But no kanohi ki te kanohi sitting down, like, you know, we acknowledge this plan, here's, here's what you're saying, and, you know, here's how it's reflected inside the plan. Yeah. I'm not quite sure how the process works, and I may, I may need to consult with uh, council staff. Um, um, and it refers to the point you're just making here, <coughs> where you might assume that the council will take account of an iwi management plan or an our, our management plan on their own without referring to to say the authors of the plan um, <clears throat> and I wondered whether there might not be something in that I mean that, that that might that could be explored a bit more how better to have that our management plan reflected in the plan change that any council not just this one because I've come across this on previous plan change exercises where um, sometimes we just assume that we all agree on what has to go in and what doesn't have to go in. 
Um, not too sure if I can provide like a perfect process that might be under the table. I just could say what really didn't quite work for us. Um, no, that's all I have. Thank you very much. Kia ora. Yep, just one more question. Just going back to your paragraph 4.6 about low flow uh, setting in the Tutaki Kiri. Um, the recommend, or well, you're, you're seeking to increase it to 2,800 litres a second. Um, and I was just wondering, can you recall how you landed on that number? Uh, from memory, we had a, um, a table undertaken where it had different levels of protection for aquatic species. And that the 2,800 um, was a level that we were comfortable with, with the level of protection for those aquatic species. Fine. And is that in your, the footnote reference, the Tutakari values report, is that table in that report, is it? Or? Uh, there may be a little bit more detail around the 2800 number, but I don't think that table's in, in the values report. Okay. Yeah. I could find, if, you, if you're after it, we. I've, well, I was just wondering whether you know, it's quite a specific figure, like all of these numbers are, and you know, how did you get to that figure? Uh, also supportive of uh, the submission around uh, uh, a raise to 3,300. Yes, I, yeah, I see that too, thanks. Thank you. Thank you very Thank much you for, for your submission. Your thoughts I, I like blunt and to the point. Um, your submission was was very well written and articulate, and, and and it's great when it's straight to the point because we don't really have to read through. So we enjoy reading, but <laughs> we've we've had to enjoy reading, but when it, when a submission is succinct and to the point, that's really helped. It was very helpful for us. Thank you very much. Yeah. I think we're just going to take um, a little break. Um, Uh, we're just going to take a break, and I th it might be even afternoon tea time. It is, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, my legs are starting to.